but Catherine has her own room. It's been six months since I started living with Catherine, my step-granddaughter. I often saw Catherine doing her homework in the bathroom. Feeling a distance between us, our daily conversations were scarce, and I spent many days troubled. Even asking daughter-in-law Ava, I was curtly told it's because the bathroom helps her concentrate, leaving me puzzled. With my son, Taylor and the others frequently abroad for work, they were hardly ever home. It's practically just Catherine and me living together. Wanting to get closer to Catherine, I started off with safe conversations. Is school fun? It's okay. Which class do you like best? They're all the same. Her monotone responses left me at a loss for what to ask next. It was unusual for conversation to falter to this extent, even considering her shy nature. Just as I began to feel anxious about our lack of closeness, Taylor and the others were away on what seemed like their umpteenth business trip of the year. It was as if she was waiting for us to be alone, Catherine looked me in the eyes, almost pleadingly, and began to speak. Grandma, can I talk to you for a sec? What's wrong? Actually. Catherine, suggesting it's faster to show than tell, took my hand and led me to Ava's room. Upon entering, she opened one of the many piled up cardboard boxes to show me something. This winter was feeling particularly cold. On my way home from shopping, carrying bags, I walked slowly, shivering from the cold. Perhaps it's because it's nearly Christmas, but the streets are busier and filled with smiling faces. Ah, uh, I feel lonely. This year, at 64, I, Harper, recently lost my beloved husband Martin in an accident, feeling an overwhelming loneliness. Until last year, I enjoyed Christmas with Martin, laughing like everyone passing by, but now I'm alone. Even though I didn't buy much, the bags felt unusually heavy, and I hurried home. I'm home, oh yeah I forgot, there's no one here. My words disappeared into the air. Mechanically, I stored the groceries I had bought. Suddenly, I realized that I hadn't cooked much since Martin's passing. Maybe I'll make beef stew today. Muttering to myself, the house phone rang. I rushed to pick it up. Hello? Hey, it's Taylor. The caller was my only son, Taylor. Your dad's funeral is over. Of course, I had informed Taylor about Martin's passing but he had said he couldn't make it due to work. I was going to come home, but the weather turned bad, and my flight got cancelled. Sensing an excuse, I intuitively felt Taylor had something to consult. So, what's up today? Can I come back home? The idea of Taylor returning home after becoming an adult surprised me a bit. Feeling more secure with my son than living alone, I was about to express my consent when Taylor surprised me further. Actually, I got married while on a business trip. What? Taking a deep breath, Taylor quickly spilled the beans. The thing is, she has a kid. Still in elementary school and needs constant attention, but since my wife is busy with work and often abroad, I was wondering if you could help us out. I've always loved children, so despite the surprise, the news of having a granddaughter made me genuinely happy. My wife's name is Ava, and the child is Catherine. Ava's in sales, always bustling about abroad. To me, a housewife, a woman in sales and traveling the world seemed quite impressive. What's Catherine like? She's in the second grade, very serious and a good kid. So, when will you move in? Really? You're okay with it? Taylor sounded surprised, as if my approval was unexpected. Of course. I'd be happy if it becomes livelier. Thanks, that really helps. Though Taylor hastily hung up, I felt relieved knowing I wouldn't have to feel lonely from next month. As I busied myself with cleaning the house and buying what was needed, time flew by, and before I knew it, the day Taylor and his family were supposed to return was upon us. I tried calling Taylor to ask various things about preparing a room for my granddaughter, but couldn't reach him. Since that call from Taylor, there had been no contact at all. Despite feeling anxious, the day they were said to arrive finally came. Not knowing what time they would come back, I felt restless all day. Just as I had finished tidying up every corner of the house, 
the doorbell rang. At the door, Taylor and his family were lined up. Welcome. As I opened the door, I locked eyes with Taylor, who awkwardly scratched his cheek. I was worried because you wouldn't answer my calls, no matter how many times I tried. Sorry, I've been busy. From now on, since we'll be living together, it's important to keep in touch even if you're busy. Got it. With that, Taylor turned towards the beautiful woman and the quiet child standing next to him. Let me introduce them. This is my wife Ava and my daughter Catherine. Nice to meet both of you. I've been looking forward to living together. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Ava, stunning enough to catch even a woman's eye, spoke with a voice as clear as a news reporter. Nice to meet you, Harper. I look forward to getting to know you. Ava seemed lively, a contrast to Catherine, who was quiet. However, she greeted me properly, a serious child just as Taylor had described. Just call me Grandma. After showing them their rooms, a moving truck arrived shortly after. As the movers unloaded box after box, most were taken into Ava's room. I offered to help with the overwhelming amount of boxes, but was declined because they felt bad for moving in without contacting me. I decided it was best not to intrude too much on their privacy. After all the boxes were moved, the movers left. Taylor now a bit settled, spoke solemnly to a photo of his father. It all happened so suddenly. Dad. I heard a truck ran a red light and was about to hit a child. He died trying to save the kid. Sounds like dad. Yes, and the child was saved. The parents were very grateful. As a father, I need to take good care of Catherine too. Despite his busy work, Taylor seemed concerned about not spending enough time with Catherine. While we were talking, Catherine, who had finished unpacking, stood quietly in a corner of the living room. Taylor then left to finish unpacking. Catherine, are you hungry? No, I'm fine. Catherine's mature response made me think she was shy. How about having some tea with me, Catherine? Thank you. It might take some time to get closer to Catherine. As I prepared the tea, I tried to find a way to bond. What do you like, Catherine? Nothing in particular. Any food you like, anything at all? Nothing. I was taken aback by Catherine's reluctance to engage in a conversation. Just as I was struggling to find a topic, Taylor, who seemed to have finished unpacking quickly, returned to the living room. Since I'm always abroad, I don't have much stuff, so it was quick. Laughing, Taylor's words made me imagine how busy his life must have been. Good work. I'm about to start dinner, but does anyone have any dietary restrictions? We can eat anything. At Taylor's words, Catherine also silently nodded. Understood. I decided to make beef stew for dinner. And as it simmered, Ava walked into the living room. It smells wonderful. Thank you. I just finished making beef stew. I've been traveling so much, I'm really happy to have a homemade meal for a change. It must be tough for you, Ava. Yes. The company is on the verge of bankruptcy due to a failed business venture. The salary is low, so I'm traveling to various places for work. Hearing about the difficult situation Ava was in, my heart ached, and I decided to support her as much as I could. Ava, feel free to rely on me anytime. Ava nodded with a smile, saying yes. And so, our life together with Taylor and his family began. However, Ava and Taylor were away from home more than I expected, and I couldn't help but think Catherine must feel quite lonely in this situation. Though there's no blood relation, I sympathize with Catherine's situation. And have to take care of her while being careful not to overstep. After six months of cautiously navigating our relationship, I noticed Catherine often studying in the bathroom. But Catherine has her own room. Today, as she came out of the bathroom with her study materials, I immediately asked her. Catherine, why do you study in the bathroom? Isn't your room more spacious? But she didn't answer, just hung her head in silence. You can tell me anything, you know? I said gently, looking into her eyes, 
but Catherine just clenched her mouth shut and shook her head. Let me know when you're ready to talk. Eventually, she didn't say anything and quickly went back to her room. I should ask Ava when she comes back today. Since we started living together, Taylor has been good about keeping in touch. I received a message that Taylor would be back next week, and Ava was returning today. As the message said, Ava came home that evening. I'm home. Welcome back. Ava entered the house, carrying a large suitcase. This time, work went well. She seemed in a good mood, singing a trendy song while unpacking. I admired how capable she seemed as I waited for her to settle down. While I was in the kitchen, Ava came to get a drink, and I immediately asked her about Catherine. Ava, I've noticed Catherine often studies in the bathroom. Do you know why? I asked Catherine about it before, and it seems like she can concentrate better in the bathroom. Is that so? Maybe she likes small spaces? The bathroom is the quietest place, where it's hard to hear outside noises. So, don't worry about it. Indeed, the bathroom is quiet and kept clean, which might make it an easy place to concentrate. Though I was skeptical, I decided not to pry further. The next night, Ava said she was going on another business trip and left the house. Both of them are hardly ever home. It's practically just Catherine and me living together. Wanting to get closer to Catherine, I started off with safe conversations. Is school fun? It's okay. Which class do you like best? They're all the same. Her monotone answers left me at a loss for what to ask next. It was unusual for conversation to not flow, even considering her shy nature. Thinking it might be best to avoid school topics, I changed my approach. What do you do on your days off? Homework. Catherine's expression remained dark, her tone stiff. Feeling like pressing further might make her dislike me, I dropped my shoulders. You're working hard, that's admirable. I'll get dinner ready, so take it easy. At my words, she seemed a bit relieved, nodded, and went back to her room. What to do? As I headed towards the shower, pondering, I glanced at the bathroom and noticed the door was locked. Was she holding it in? If that was the case, Catherine's aloof behavior made sense. I decided to try talking to her again when the timing felt right. From the next day, I started speaking to her more, observing her mood, and even took her shopping with me on weekends. Today they have a special on meat. How about pork sauté for lunch? Yes. Do you like pork sauté, Catherine? Yes. Catherine's demeanor was unchanged, but I was beginning to read her expressions a bit more. She had tensed up a bit when I mentioned pork sauté. But, I also want to eat hamburger. Maybe we should do hamburger instead. Yes. This time, it seemed I had guessed right, and Catherine nodded with a lively voice. Then, one day, as I felt we were gradually getting closer through these subtle exchanges, we received a phone call at home. Hello? This is Walker, Catherine's homeroom teacher. Are you a family member of Catherine? Yes. I'm Catherine's grandmother. It was my first time receiving a call from the elementary school, so I was anxious. Catherine has developed a high fever and has been unwell, and unfortunately, our school nurse is not available. What? I'll come to the school right away. Interrupting the teacher, I hurriedly got ready and rushed out of the house. Upon arriving at the school and being led to the nurse's office, I rushed to Catherine's side. Catherine? It's Grandma. Do you recognize me? My granddaughter looked at me with moist eyes, breathing heavily in discomfort. Grandma. You don't have to force yourself. I'm here, so you can relax. I wiped Catherine's sweat with the towel I had brought. You're sweating a lot. Do you think you can drink some water? After inserting a straw into a bottle of sports drink, I watched her condition. Grandma. I'm thirsty. Catherine, who usually speaks formally, was talking like a normal child, clearly feeling under the weather. Even though she spoke in fits and starts, I firmly thought to myself that I would definitely help her. 
I supported Catherine's head as she tried to sit up slightly and held the straw to her lips. After taking small sips of the sports drink, Catherine managed to drink half the bottle and then lay back down on the bed. I'm sorry. Don't apologize, Catherine. It's natural to take care of you when you're suffering like this. I stroked her head and smiled gently. After a while of looking uncomfortable, Catherine gradually stabilized as I continued to care for her earnestly. Just then, the homeroom teacher, Mr. Walker, came to check on us, so I asked him to arrange a taxi. Soon after receiving word that the taxi had arrived, I supported Catherine carefully as we made our way home. Catherine, are you okay? I kept speaking to her, matching her pace as we slowly entered the house. Her room was on the second floor. Considering the difficulty of climbing stairs, I decided to let her rest on a sofa on the first floor, covered with a blanket. I continued to take care of Catherine tirelessly, making oatmeal, wiping her face with a wet towel. Grandma, thank you. It's all right. I'm always here with you, so rest easy. When the fever began to subside, Taylor came home. Catherine, are you okay? Welcome back. She's settled down and sleeping now. I'm relieved. I came back as soon as I got the message from you, but it looks like I left everything to you at a tough time. It's okay. This is exactly why I'm here for. Taylor, looking relieved, spread out the cold medicine and sports drink he had bought for Catherine on the table. By the way, where's Ava? That's the thing. I haven't heard from her. It seems she's far away this time, maybe there's bad reception. She's on a business trip again? Sounds like she has it tougher than me. I'm worried about Ava, too. I had some suspicions about Ava's absence and how I couldn't get hold of her. Though it bothered me, Catherine was my priority. A few days later, when Ava suddenly returned home, Catherine's health had fully recovered. Unlike the deepening bond between Catherine and me, Ava showed no signs of concern for Catherine. Ava, I want to talk to you about Catherine. I'm sorry. I was suddenly called into work, can we talk another time? I'm worried about Catherine. While you were away, she studied in the bathroom through hot and cold days. That's not normal. She just finds the bathroom comfortable. Please don't worry about it. Without air conditioning or heating, she's cooped up in there. She must not mind it if she can concentrate on her studies. I have to go now. What she blurted out was a remark I couldn't believe coming from a parent, and I felt a chill down my spine. Ava slipped past me, who was stunned, and left the house. A few days later, with Taylor and Ava gone on yet another overseas business trip, it was just Catherine and me. Grandma, can I talk to you? It was as if she was waiting for us to be alone, Catherine looked me in the eyes, almost pleadingly, and began to speak. What's wrong? It's better if I show you, she said, pulling me by the hand towards Ava's room. Entering the room, she opened one of the many piled up cardboard boxes and showed me something. What's this? I know, mom is having an affair. What? These are souvenirs mom bought to cover up her affair with her lover on their trips. I was shocked by her words. But the surprises didn't stop there. Catherine moved towards Ava's laptop, turned it on. Waited for it to boot up and clicked on a certain file which brought up a password prompt. I really don't want to see this but… Inside the file were numerous photos of Ava, always with a man by her side. So many! The man next to her changed in various photos, many of which showed souvenirs like the ones she had shown me. This is in Hot Springs, and this one's in Hawaii. The dates on the photos corresponded with the days Ava said she was on business trips. I needed to do some research once and borrowed mom's laptop. Catherine being in elementary, didn't have a mobile phone yet. So when she needed to look up something, she always said she was using mom's laptop. I saved my data in a file, but accidentally saved it in the wrong one. Scrolling through the photos, Catherine explained. When I was searching for my data, 
this was the only file that was locked. She continued in a somber tone, staring at Ava's smiling face in the photos. Curious, I tried entering mom's birthday as the password, and it opened. After closing the file and shutting down the laptop, she took a deep breath. When I confronted mom about the affair, she threatened me, saying if dad and grandma found out, I'd be thrown out too. What a thing to say to a child. Anger welled up inside me towards Ava. She said if I pretended not to see the affair, I wouldn't be thrown out, and she'd get me souvenirs to keep quiet. To think she'd try to bribe you with gifts bought to camouflage her affair, unbelievable. Some were forcibly placed in my room, seeing them constantly reminded me that mom was cheating, and I couldn't stand it. As she spoke, tears streamed down Catherine's face. That's why I didn't want to be in my room and ended up studying in the bathroom instead. You didn't want to study there, did you? It was so hard, I've wanted to tell you and dad for so long, but mom strictly warned me not to say anything. Reflecting on it, I realized I rarely saw Ava and Catherine having a good conversation. Seeing mom made me afraid of adults and unable to trust anyone. I see. But recently, I felt like I could talk to you. Indeed, since that day, I felt she had started to open up to me. Catherine, looking down, strained her voice out. I'm sorry for keeping silent. A granddaughter who keeps secrets doesn't deserve to be here. Please, kick me out along with mom. There's no way I'd do that. Anger reaching its peak, I made Catherine put her head back up and immediately messaged Taylor. The phone rang shortly after. Mom, is what you messaged true? His voice was hurried, conveying his panic. Yes, Catherine told me, and I saw it myself. This is an emergency. I'll talk to the company and come back home immediately. Hearing our conversation, Catherine looked anxious. Don't worry. I will protect you no matter what. Thank you. Taylor really did come back quickly. Upon his return and after seeing the evidence of Ava's affair, Taylor was furious. It was understandable. We'll confront Ava as soon as she gets back. I had never seen Taylor this angry before. I nodded at Taylor's words, waiting for Ava to return. A few days later, that day arrived. Ava, we need to talk. As soon as Ava got home, Taylor opened his mouth. What is it all of a sudden? I'm tired from just getting back. Have you been cheating? What are you talking about? Ava's obviously irritated demeanor made it clear she was playing dumb. Those souvenirs, they're matching ones you got with a man, right? They're matching ones with Catherine. I saw photos of a man holding those souvenirs. What? Did you go through my computer without permission? Ava was desperate to deflect from the truth that was becoming impossible to hide. You locked the files because you didn't want them seen, right? So it was Catherine who told you. How dare she? Ava exploded in anger and lunged at Catherine, but Taylor restrained her just in time. Was Ava always like this? It was as if she was a different person. Let me go. How dare you spill the beans? Taylor held her firmly, restricting her movements, as she spat out insults. You are complicit in this, you'll be thrown out too. Catherine did nothing wrong. I stepped forward to protect my granddaughter. I called your company, and the on the verge of bankruptcy story was a lie, wasn't it? I did nothing wrong. Stop accusing me. Ava stubbornly refused to admit her wrongdoing, but her limits were clear. Your boss said your salary was reduced because you caused problems with men within the company. That's. We'll be seeking compensation from you as well as the men involved in the divorce settlement. Finally, Ava stopped resisting and slumped down. Silence fell over the room. I feel sick because of you all. I'm going to the doctors later. After exchanging a look with me, Taylor let Ava go. She left the room as if she was drained of all energy. Ava indeed went to see the doctor. 
Apparently, she had contracted a troublesome disease overseas and needed to focus on treatment. She's paying for her reckless lifestyle. I'll have to inform Ava's company. Taylor said after receiving a call from the hospital and relayed the information to Ava's company. Ava's reputation worsened, and after the disease came to light, she had trouble with the men she had been involved with and ended up resigning. It looks like we can finally settle down. Thank you, Dad. It's what family does. Taylor said so, with his words heavy with resolve. After the turmoil subsided and we started to regain our normal life, Taylor received a call. He frowned immediately and answered. Don't joke with me. We're done. It's your problem now. He hung up abruptly. We might need to change our phone number, he muttered. What happened? It was Ava. She said she's broke because of the compensation and asked for help. How selfish. Exactly. She's getting what she deserves from the men she was involved with. It looks like Ava tried to work in the entertainment district, making use of her beauty. But her illness made it difficult to find work, leading to a life of poverty. Catherine suffered so much, it's only right Ava faces the consequences. Catherine was remarkable for enduring it all alone. As I reflected, Taylor spoke with determined eyes. I'll do everything so Catherine never has to suffer again. It seemed the ordeal made Taylor want to rebuild his relationship with Catherine, leading him to request a transfer to a domestic role. Spending more time at home, he grew closer to Catherine, strengthening their bond. Lately, Catherine's smiles had become more frequent. Catherine, is there somewhere you'd like to go? The aquarium. Then let's go today, all three of us. Taylor's off too. Yay! I love you, Grandma! Jumping up and down, she smiled happily. Catherine's joyful laugh warmed my heart. I love you too, Catherine. Holding Catherine's hand as we set off, I promised myself to protect this smile forever.